Hi, it's Gabrielle, and today we're going to go through three things every physics student should know. And this is coming from somebody who really didn't want to do physics for her leaving cert, but I still ended up doing pretty well. So if I can do well in my exam, so can you. So firstly, I'd like to just give a bit of background and some context as to why I think these three things are really, really useful. Now, I didn't do physics by choice for my leaving cert. I had to choose between physics or home ec or business, and I already didn't like like home ec and business were my junior search exams, so it was only physics that I could really do. And oh boy, I found it really, really difficult to study physics because I am more into sort of creative subjects like art and English and languages. Physics just requires you to have a very mathsy brain and a very scientific brain, which I just don't have, unfortunately. But somehow I managed to actually do the exam paper for physics and I did pretty well. So here's how I did it. And it was basically just using these three things. And trust me when I say that if I could do well in my physics exam, then you can too. So let's get into it. First things first, I think that one hugely overlooked part of the physics exam is the experiments. When you open up your exam papers, the first thing you'll see will be the experiment questions in section A. They are worth 30% of your grade and you know what? They are easy marks. You can do so well in your experiment questions so long as you study it right. Like in my own exam, like the experiment questions carried my grade, okay? They are so important for doing well in physics. So we all have those sort of like hardback books where you write down all of your experiments and my god, use that hardback to study your experiments. The textbooks tend to have like so much unnecessary information in them that I think it's always better to study from your experiment book because you're rewriting the experiments in your own words, you're writing in any additional information, it's all clear and it's right there. However, one thing that I'd really really recommend for everybody to do is get these like large sticky notes and use them in your experiment book. So basically when you're studying your experiment questions, open up your hardback and compare the information that you have in your hardback to what questions come up. And then take your sticky notes and then write down the most common questions that come up for that experiment and stick it into your book. That way when you're flicking through your experiment book you can like see those questions and like you know like be able to test yourself whether you can answer them or not. Like this was a complete game changer for me because the questions that I had written into my experiment book were the ones that came up, surprise surprise, because there's only like a certain amount of questions that the examiner can ask you on your paper, you know? And I'd also like to mention that you might need to draw like a diagram as part of like answering an experiment question. And remember, this isn't like an art exam, you don't need to put in like shading or anything. The most important thing here is to label your diagrams. If you don't label your diagram, then there's no point in drawing a diagram, okay? Label everything. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more videos like this. So the second thing you should know if you're studying physics is that the log tables are really, really, really important to go through before your exam. The log tables have just so much information in them and they can get you loads of marks for zero effort. I was told at the start of fifth year that like, the log tables are pretty useful, but I didn't realize how useful they were until like the end of sixth year when I was flicking through my log tables and I saw that like so much information is like literally in there. Having your log tables in your exam is actually like having a cheat book. There is just so much information there that you can use in your exam paper. For example, if you have a question about derivation, you can find the start of a lot of derivations in your log tables. Like if you're unsure about some units, you can find those in your log tables. Tables. If you are unsure about a definition, you could even find a formula and then like define the terms in that formula and you'll get marks for it even though you didn't remember the definition, you didn't memorize it. And it's not only all that, you can find the relationships between variables and just so much information, you just need to know how to find it. And by the way, it's worth mentioning that you won't be able to bring in your own log tables into the exam, you'll have to use the ones already there. So be sure to ask your teacher to go through the log tables in class time so that like you know where the important bits are, or alternatively leave a like on this video so I know that you're interested in a video maybe going through the log tables and showing you all the things that you need to look out for. And finally, the last thing I'd like to mention is that I think you should spend a bit less time flicking through your textbook when you're studying for physics. Now, this 
This might be a bit of a controversial sort of topic, but I found that the textbooks that I was using to study physics had just like way too much information in them and they were way too wordy. Like the physics exam isn't a reading comprehension exam, so you don't need so much information to be able to do well in the paper. I think personally the worst thing that I did for my physics study in fifth year was actually just using my textbook to study. I had to like read the textbook and expect to be able to recite all of the information afterwards. Like no, that's really not how it works. When I started to use active study methods, that's when my grades really started to improve. Like, don't rely on reading your textbook, instead you need to be using flashcards to study your definitions, you need to be using mnemonics to remember complicated things that flashcards don't help you to remember. Like for example, a mnemonic that I really like is Granny Wears Eccentric Stuff, which helps you to remember the like order of the four fundamental forces, like stuff like that is a lot more useful than just reading your textbook. And if you have a StudyClicks membership, you can even do fun little quizzes to like test you on your definitions, on your calculations, and stuff like that in a fun way. Like physics is a very active subject, you need to be practicing your calculations, you need to be practicing your definitions, you can't just be like reading like your textbook and hoping that like the information will just like soak up into your head. And I feel as though this is probably very obvious, but past exam paper questions are so important for physics. So the more past exam paper questions you do, the less likely you'll have a surprise come up on the day of your exam. Hello, it's me from the future here editing the video and I just want to mention one extra thing. So in this video I went through everything that I feel as though helped me with my physics exam, but I completely forgot to mention one thing that I wish I would have had when I did my exam, which is sample solution videos for physics. I found that the marking schemes for the physics exam papers were actually painfully vague. It was kind of hard to tell like where I was going wrong and like what I need to change in order to get full marks for the questions I was answering. So what we've done is actually created a bunch of videos that go through the exam paper question and these videos basically show you how to answer the questions in a way that will get you full marks in your exam paper questions, which will hopefully help you to get a H1 in your exam. This would have been a complete game changer for me if I had it when I did my exam, so please be sure to check this out. We have loads of these videos available on the StudyClick site, but we also uploaded quite a few on our YouTube channel, so I will link them down below. So use mnemonic devices, use flashcards, use exam papers to actively study for the exam. And by the way, if you don't want to make your own flashcards, we have loads available on StudyClicks for free, I will link them down below. And as a bonus sort of tip for the actual exam, I'd really recommend to spend the first two to three minutes of the exam actually just flicking over the questions and deciding which ones you want to do. Doing this will actually save you so much time during the exam because you won't be wasting time on deciding which questions you want to do. And also you'll be making sure that you do the questions that are the easiest for you first and then you can focus the rest of your exam time on the harder questions. We also have a how to get a H1 in physics guide on study clicks that you can read for free. I'll link it down below. I really hope this helps and best of luck with the study.